All right. So I'm Luis Rodriguez, and I met Susan. Um, I just joined Susan, and my first role there is to help with the Delta on the Linux kernel. Um, previously, I was working on the 8811 subsystem uh, and just general random device drivers. Um, and um, yeah, so let's get into this. This is what I think um, is it's a bit comical, but I think it might help reflect the, a point that I want to make about where we are and where we need to go. It's probably not even quicksand. I mean, I'm gonna have a good laugh about this tonight with the guys. <laughs> well, this is just perfect. Stupid quicksand. Stupid jungle. Ah, I wanna bite someone in the face. Mother. 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 Ah. That stupid jungle. Ah. Are you there, God? It's me, Giraffe. L listen, if you would just give me a mulligan on this quicksand thing, I promise. I promise. No more peeing on your shorter creatures. <laughs> what, did you get a deal? This is where we don't want to go. It gets worse, but I don't want to continue. <laughs> So what is this delta? Uh, so I, I spoke with the Citrus folks, and they mentioned that they essentially just reset their tree and basically started from scratch about two years ago. And they started testing things. And essentially, now they have a delta uh, that's much, much less, uh, uh, it, it's smaller than Sousa's for sure. Uh, and it mostly consists of backboards, though. So it's not really that big. Um, apart from certain features that are being developed still. Uh, Debian has really small delta. It's only four microcode patches. Uh, the Zen package itself, it's a bit different though, but you know my focus is on the kernel side here. SUSE has the largest delta of all Linux distributions, and um, it has you know changed over the years, but obviously it's still really, really hard to get rid of that delta. Um, it's 359,000 lines of, of, of changes, you know, not, not actual code that you're adding, but actual, you know, just patches itself. That's pretty significant. You can obviously go just and ch check out the, the code yourself. It's all public. Now, um, it's, it's really hard to maintain that. And there, as someone who's really new to virtualization, really new to Zen, I'll say that it's a really complex thing. And obviously, as uh, we have seen through a series of presentations, there's a lot of uh, diversity. Uh, people have been forking, uh, doing their own Zen Store Ds. Uh, everyone is essentially trying to productize different solutions. They use different uh, kernel versions. They have different focuses. Some folks just focus on DOM0. Some, fo some focus on guests. Well, for the Linux kernel, we need to focus on one thing. We need to focus on both. We need to make it really clean. We need to install uh, the unstable version of Zen and also the Linux kernel, and just have it work on most of the Linux distributions. Um, the first thing I started looking into was systemd. It's not because I like systemd. I actually, I'm trying really hard to like systemd, but obviously it, there's a bit of an issue there if you're running into a lot of um, issues, uh, corner cases. And it turns out that uh, Zen uh, actually had about four really rare corner cases to deal with systemd. Um, there's actually other corner cases there, but I'm not going to get into them. But it, it's been a uh, it's it's been a pain in the ass. Now, I'm curious how many people here had installed unstable Zen on a System D system, uh, maybe Fedora or Suzy before System D patches. Two, okay. How'd it go? Okay for what we needed. Okay, um, I had issues. Not only with systemd, I had issues obviously with uh, even Grub. Uh, there's patches for Grub that just used to work actually with the OpenSUSE 13.1, and now I just switched to factory. There's issues there. 
Um, one of the issues is that Grubb actually believes that you shouldn't have um, uh, DOM0 and guess at the same time. Obviously, that's wrong. So it won't actually display even your kernel if you compile your kernel with both of them. We recently had decided on the mailing list uh, regarding just a simple you know, make Zen config type of commands so that way you can easily compile a Zen enabled kernel for DOM0 and guest. We decided that we would just merge them together. Now, part of the issue though is that there's been backlash in the community about accepting Zen type of patches upstream in the kernel. Uh, and it's only so far it seems on the x86 um, tree, but still it's a backlash and it sets us back. It means that um, Getting things upstream for Zen is a pain in the ass, and we want to show kernel developers that we're serious about, uh, uh, we have a change of heart. So um, what is that delta? We have that on the wiki. Um, uh, it, the first thing I did was just basically just go through the list of patches that we had on on, on the Suzy uh, tree, and I, it was really just randomly just went you know, through the list linearly. And the first one that I had to deal with was IP, IPv6 autoconf. This one in particular just deals with, it's maybe like a one line change and it dealt with an, an ancient bug that is now essentially not even a fix. We essentially just revert that patch. I mean, just remove it from the tree, but it's not doing anything. But it's there because we don't have history of what's actually been going on. And there's not, there's not effort to actually ensure that we go with the proper architecture through you know, make a solution for the things that we need. So we need to change uh, our attitudes of how we're gonna actually deal with problems and architecture. Um, so the other thing I, I'm looking into is the netback stuff. And the reason I looked at the netback stuff is that when I looked at the IPv6 out of conf issue, I saw that it was essentially a workaround to disable multicast. And the reason it was disabling multicast is that is the original report was that it was issuing out uh, IPv6 um, auto auto conf uh, packets, and that was actually uh, essentially creating issues with uh, conflicting MAC addresses because we use the same MAC address for the netback. Now you don't need an IPv6 interface on your backend. In fact, you don't need IPv4. So that begged the question: Well, why the hell do we have a netback? And the last thing I looked into: Well, you know, you really only need it for a corner case issue for routing. You don't really need it. For that, we could just actually implement some sort of user space arc daemon and just have the forwarding be done for us. Uh, of course, there's architecture that folks are dealing with to to scale and obviously not deal with um, the same issues that we're that 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 we're facing. But um, what we really need is to start putting these problems out there into the mailing list and engaging with the community, just like the KVM folks are. So that way, we work together in the community for a solution because. Just as um, we're dealing with these issues, the KVM folks also have to deal with this. We could actually come up with a generic solution, in my opinion. Um, and again, again, if you guys want to help review as a proof of concept of how we can improve the netback by removing the backend driver, please let me know. I'd like to talk with a few of you folks. I think that the Intel uh, VM funk stuff might, might likely help there as well if we want to do it in a secure way. But I don't see a need for us to actually have backend drivers. I think if we can generalize the solution, uh, I think it'd be better. The cleaner we keep the kernel, the better, on the back end at least. Um, we also ha now have another engineer at Susan. He, he'll be working on helping with the upstream. Uh, that's the list of stuff that he's uh, indicated that he'd be working on next. Um, we also have uh, EFI, who uh, Daniel had presented on. Is Daniel here? Uh, so is, is pretty much, is it all done at this point? Okay. Okay. Beautiful. And now I think you mentioned that there was a guest support that was still pending. Is that right? So just testing, basically. Yeah. Also, okay. Cool. Um, Conrad Wilk, is he here? Uh, is uh, is it correct that you're working user mode PV lock? 
Sorry about that. User mode PV lock. User mode PV lock. Yeah. PV PV clock. PV clock, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm telling you, some of these things are just like so big that you know, even looking into them, I just don't know. Um, so this is a list that uh, uh, me and Jurgen have been compiling, and somehow you appeared there. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, we'll keep you on the list. <laughs> uh, Boris Ostrovsky? He's on All right. Uh, I th it seems that he was working O profile support. Is there a confirmation that we can? O profile is definitely getting everywhere. So he swapped over to using Perf. Okay. Is that reasonable for us, John? You know. Can I mean can we go with the alternative essentially? Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Yeah. Great. Uh, great news. Uh, so. Uh, so we can hopefully you know get rid of that, um, and that's great progress so far. Um, I still think that that we need apart from addressing the delta, which I'll go into. Uh, next that is not yet addressed, I think we need a bit of attitude adjustment. Um, and by that I mean that I think it's a lot easier if we, instead of doing the solution, productizing it, it'd be best if we actually try to upstream the solution and only once it's upstream do we productize on it. Now there's a caveat with that, that of course, is that you need to backport this stuff. But for that, I do believe that we can actually backport automatically. We've been doing this for other subsystems. We have about 800 over 800 drivers now backported automatically in the Linux kernel, and we're using an infrastructure for that. Um, and if you guys want to learn more about that, I'd be happy to go into all the details on a, on a talk on Friday. Um, it's something that I think can scale, and if we, it's it's one one of the ways that in other subsystems we used to try to convince vendors that if you work upstream, we'll backport your shit automatically, um, and that typically seemed to have worked. Um, and backporting actually does require quite a bit of work. Uh, so we can actually provide an architecture that does that in a seamless way, both on Linux Next and stable releases. I think that might help. Uh, but again, you know, of course that could be off topic, so you know, we could talk about that some other time or if you guys want to on Friday, if you guys show up to that session. Um, so these are uh, items that need verification and um, I looked at PCI guest of and I got scared. I got, I, I just, it was huge delta. It seems like it, a, a project in itself. I was curious if any of you guys are working on this or know anyone who's working on any of these items. Sure, PCI guest dev is one. Uh, Mem hot plug is another one. I have no idea. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll add you in, but in a bit. Currently, I'm focusing on EFI. All right. Sure. I but beautiful. Excellent. Uh, it's almost like uh, you know, just. Uh, eBay or something, I just auction stuff off, you know, and hopefully you guys <laughs> will take it. Uh, multi page ring, anyone? Uh, <laughs> What's up? <laughs> yeah, anyone else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I have no idea. Now, I would like to back to the one of those slides. As I remember, mm -hmm. one year or one year and a half, there were some patches posted on the developer. I don't know what, what happened with them. Do you remember that? It was uh, inferred by a guy from Twitter or something like that. So, here's my recommendation for those of you guys who do know or would like to help. Uh, if we, I don't know if we can do a bird of a feather at this point some other time or over beer later or whatever but but you know I think I think we need uh, what I've seen so far is really hard to discuss this on a mailing list I think this is the ideal environment for trying to discuss this type of stuff um, so um, I'm hoping that we can at least break things down and split this huge load between as many folks who are interested and I think that if we also do this, we'd actually be showing the kernel community that there's a huge change of heart and that we're going to work upstream. And I think we won't go into the depression mode. Uh, we, we, don't, we shouldn't go there or beyond that. Um, I think, uh, to be honest, I think we're quite well beyond that stage already. I mean, since Jeremy got the stuff upstream and the final call derivatives went on and Conrad and David and Boris. These are all items that essentially need work. Right. So I don't know. Oh no, okay. A lot of people are doing stuff upstream first. But can we get that commitment? It doesn't seem like that's the case. Alright, so So PV USB, expose ballooning limits, retain tasklet, netback, add block if up packet, CDROM command forwarding, CDROM. So all of these like the tasklet ones are trying to solve a problem that existed in the past, but I don't think those problems are any more present because people are just All right, I think we, it would really help a lot if we can get together, knock through this list, and actually identify and break it down because it's really hard to even review this because at, at first, when I started, I just started reviewing one patch and it took me eons to figure out the history. I had to go digging through a series of bug reports that made, and, and then I poked people and they didn't remember what the issue was. So as someone who's learning, I can tell you, even if we have new resources assigned specifically to working on these things, it's really hard right now, and we need help to identify these things and say, well, we don't need any of this. So if we can get together and actually review some of these items, it would help a lot. So I wasn't involved on the Citrix side, but I think that's basically the reason when they moved from classic kernels to PDL kernels, they threw away the hash key and, and started from scratch. Can, because there was so much corrupt that had been accumulated, and from your list here, it looked like you're in a similar yeah. So, so, sure, so, okay, I'll get rid of all those pictures that are fuzzing, you know, the fonts and whatever. Is, is, that, is that a reasonable place to? Exactly. Uh, on, on Wednesday morning, we actually have a meeting. Okay. Four people will be there. Excellent. So for example, a good place where we can at least set the mechanism in place to go through there. Would that not disrupt any of the other conversations? I just want to make sure, I, you know, if, if I just want to make sure that this is addressed and we have enough time to talk about it. That's all. <laughs> Is there beer? <laughs> uh, so that's in the morning. You can get a crate. I mean, that's all I have then. Um, and thanks. Unless there's any questions. <laughs>